All right, welcome back to Country and Cold Cans. As always, I'm Logan, sitting here with Andy and Kyle. Uh, like we like to say, go on and follow us on social media, on Twitter and on Facebook and on Instagram. We'll have some good stuff for you there, mainly on Twitter if you want to follow a little bit more up-to-date content from us. Um, go on to Spotify and Apple Podcasts, subscribe, give us five stars and a good review, and get the good word out about Country and Cold Cans. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, how are you? Fantastic. Yeah, I'm doing all right. You know, end of the weekend, here we are on a Sunday night. Uh, it's been a pretty low key weekend for the most part, but uh, play a little golf this weekend for a buddy's male baby shower, whatever that means. That's a first. So it was fun. We were supposed to di- buy diapers, and nobody brought diapers. So I told him I was I was like I'm not going to buy diapers at the store. I said I'll just give me your address, and I'll have them delivered from Amazon. Respectable. Yeah, I was like I'm not going to go buy Pampers and bring them to the house. I'll get them delivered. <laughs> What do you say when the cashier is just like, oh, congrats on the baby? Like, well, it's not mine. Yeah. Baby. That's a real, real it's just weird baby. to say. Conversation <laughs> started there. Yeah, I'm just like, I, I don't know what it is. I just like, I'm 27 years old and I'm not comfortable buying diapers in the stores. Child, it is. Yeah, maybe it'll be different when I have a kid on the way, but I don't have a kid on the way. So I'm not it's buying like diapers that, in a store. It's that weird age where it feels weird to buy Kool Aid and it feels weird to buy diapers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I had bought Pedialyte and diapers, they would think that it was all for children and be like, "No, the Pedialyte's for me." <laughs> <laughs> going to a baby <laughs> shower, it's going to get wild. Yeah, there's going to be <laughs> lots of refreshments here on the golf course. Um, I think that Chase opened his first. I'm not even going to call it a beer. He was drinking seltzers. He opened his oh. first one at 8:38 a.m. and by the evening he was out of commission. I'm just like, all right, man, you can tell he's getting a little older. He's uh, he's got a few months until he has no more sleep. You know, some, some things never change. Sounds like classic Jake's. Yeah. Very speaking much of cold, speaking of cold snacks, I saw, uh, I heard on the You Bet Your Radio podcast when they were in Nashville, they didn't have Bush Light. That's what they always drink. But I don't remember what the first word were, was, but whatever it was called, it's something cold snacks is the name of the drink. Oh, yeah. It's beer. I think I it's from even, Kentucky. To be honest with you, I didn't even know people outside of our friend group referred to, to them as cold snacks. That's just something we started saying at tailgates in, in college. It's the name of it. It's something cold snacks is yeah. the name of it. Well, I'm saying I just didn't know that was a, a, a term outside of our, our circle to begin with. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you didn't make that one up. No, I definitely didn't make it up, but <laughs> just didn't know other people used it. So <laughs> where are you at, Andy? Kansas City. You're just walking around. Outside with your phone and headset on. I thought it was I'm a skyscraper. On... First. I know. I no, thought it was... no, it's a pallet. Oh, I thought it was a skyscraper yeah. too. That's, no. that's a, you're at your truck then. Yeah, I'm sitting on the back of the truck. The phone service wasn't too great at the on the other side. I had to get closer to town. Oh, so what side of Kansas City are you in? East side. East side. Which is what state? Missouri. Missouri. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, let's jump into the first thing we were, had to talk about today. Enough of our nonsense from our weekends about buying diapers at 27 and all that shit. But uh, so Matthew McConaughey recently uh, had a benefit virtual concert for the people affected in Texas by the uh, winter storms that went through there. It was like a once in a 100 year kind of thing that affected every single county in Texas, which is crazy. Like uh, you don't think about you know, how rare something like that is to hit a state like Texas, but it hit them, hit them pretty hard. A lot of people didn't have power and water for a little while, but uh, McConaughey being probably one of the coolest celebrities, um, out there in Hollywood, even though he technically, I guess he lives in Austin, right? He, I think um, he's always lived in Austin. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe when he was younger, I think he probably, I think I remember hearing during his interview with Joe Rogan one time that he lived, I think he lived in Hollywood for a little while and he was rooming with, one of the famous guys from uh, Ocean's Eleven, but I can't remember which one. Matt Damon, maybe. But I don't know if that's true, so don't take our word for that. I don't think that is. I think, I think he lived on. Be. I think he lived with a producer and stayed on his couch, I believe. No. Oh, well, maybe. Go Either way. Book, I'm smart. Either way. Uh, Andy, since you started reading, I don't know what to say about you. But, <laughs> but uh, McConaughey did a virtual concert. All the benefits went to people affected by the storm down in Texas. And it was called We Are Texas. And had a lot, you know, the who's who of people from Texas from across all kinds of genres. I mean, George Strait was there. Um, you had Clint Black. 
I mean, I'm sure not everyone there was actually from Texas because I know Joe Rogan is not, but he was he was included in it. And, but he now he is a, uh, a resident of the Lone Star State. But the thing that we kind of wanted to talk about was it because we found it really cool was um, Post Malone. Uh, he covered with, he was playing with the White Yokum's band and he covered a couple country songs. The first one um, that I saw was actually uh, he covered Brad Paisley's "I'm Gonna Miss Her," which when I was a kid was a straight jam. It was, I don't know, man. It was something about how he, he's leading into saying his wife, his woman's going to leave him, but you know what? He's going to miss her, but he like, cause he likes fishing more, but post did a good job on that. I thought it was funny for like to hear post sit like a guy like with face fat tattoos, singing a song about his woman, leaving him cause he's going fishing. Yeah. Well, post is a country boy, man. I think he lives out in Utah, drinks, yeah, he lives lots in Utah. Of, drinks lots of Bud Light and drives his Ford Raptor around. I just thought that was funny. You, it's not like what you expect out of a guy talking about his woman was going to leave him because he's going fishing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but the thing that we really wanted to talk about was not even so much the Brad Paisley song, but instead the more impressive cover was uh, Dwight Yoakam's band and Post Malone did a cover version of um, You Can Have the Crown by Sergio Simpson, which in, a, in a, the original song by itself is a straight up jam. I love that song. I have ever since I first heard it when I listened to High Top Mountain. But Post killed it, man. I mean, you guys saw that, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought he killed both of them. Yeah. I mean, it was fantastic. I thought they were both great. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, I think that Post Malone, he's one of the more versatile artists out there in music right now. He can cover lots of ground with different genres. I mean, he does rock songs great, too. I mean, he's, I don't know, he, he reminds me a lot of, uh, like, in, when he does not, like, pop and rap or whatever that stuff is, It he reminds me so much of Co Wetzel. That would be a cool collab. I know it would. That I, I I want that so bad. But the uh, I I'd be down for it. I'm not gonna like I wouldn't. But one thing I did find interesting was I, I read an article the other day that apparently Sergio Simpson and Poster are friends and they drunk FaceTime each other and uh, it, Sergio has said that he wants to. And he's told Post that he wants to produce a live instrument. Uh, Post Malone record, which I think would be fantastic. I think Post could pull off a, a Rootsy record. I really do. And it would be awesome if Sturgill produces it. I yeah, think so. I think you, I think you definitely can pull it off. Yeah, I do. Just because I, I, think, I think Post just likes music in general. Oh, yeah, 100%. So I think he can He's a true musician. With, yeah, I think he can get in touch with whatever sound they produce for him. Yeah. Come up with something. I know that he's been spotted wearing like a Coulter wall and a Tyler Tilder shirt too. That's pretty cool. Like he, yeah. he apparently knows good music within that genre. It's not like he's out there rocking Florida, Georgia line or Sam Hunt. So no, and he strikes me also as somebody who wants to uh, find stuff that's not mainstream. Anyway. His stuff, while it is mainstream is like, it's, it's unique to him. So I think he kind of wants to do the same. I, I feel like he lives his life a certain way. Oh yeah, definitely. So, I mean, if, if you saw his four-hour interview with Joe Rogan, he yeah, his he alien talked, and friends probably yeah, he talked about it. He talked about coming up with song ideas with his alien friend Ziggy. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that interview. But You're gonna have to watch that interview. It was re- it was actually really entertaining. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like that, I can't imagine it, though if he collab with Co. You know, they're both just gonna get shit canned, and they're gonna have like Ziggy probably featured on the record. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can see the executive producer ziggy the alien i mean i totally can see it what's the uh title of the album ziggy the alien <laughs> that would actually be kind of lit i'm not gonna act like it wouldn't yeah, until you find R. out R. that it's R. about his his alien oh i know but you know with no one post he probably will have he loves olive garden he'd probably have og catered they say that guy like just chows down on Olive Garden anytime he's on the road. Can't be mad at him. Such a random thing to be a fan of. I know. I, mean, I, I love Olive everywhere. Garden. I do too. It's everywhere, so it makes sense. Italian trio. I mean, it's lit. <laughs> yeah, Italian. OG is good, bro. I mean, I'm not an OG hater by any means. Oh no, no. but a special occasion. Yeah. yeah, if by any chance anyone that's involved with Post Malone happens to hear this podcast. Definitely collab with Sergio and collab with Co. We're we're here for it. The people want it. Give the people what they want. And come on, this and if show anybody, to break it. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and, and if, if anybody's affiliated with Olive Garden, we would love to collab with you as well. Yeah, we would take any sponsorship from Olive Garden. <laughs> But, uh, I, I wouldn't want the money. I just want the free food. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna look. Even if they we, they just sponsored <laughs> us and we could just get like 50 percent discounts whenever we go, I'm cool with that too. I'm not being picky here. I'm not a greedy person. <laughs> but anyways, all right. Moving into the next thing we had, we had on the uh, agenda here. Um, Austin Need. We talked about him releasing a record. Um, I know Andy probably has some thoughts on that before we get into uh, the music video for a line to myself. But Andy, what did you think of the album? I dig it. I love I I love this new Texas rock thing that's happening basically. If you want to call it Texas rock, it's just rock, but I really like the album. I've listened to it many times. Yeah, any standout songs cuz I know you've listened to it more than I have. Lying to Myself was probably my favorite song after the second listen. That was the one that was stood out the most to me. That little like riff when it goes into like the chorus like right before it, that just like sets the whole song off. Yeah. I, that's become my favorite song on that album too, and which is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring it up here. Um, I really dig that song, and the music video is hilarious. I know that I, we were all uh, talking about talking about this music video on here, and um, there's something I don't know what it is about Austin Mead with bowling alleys and bathroom scenes, <laughs> but he's got two straight music videos that were set in a bowling alley, and there's a scene of two dudes in the bathroom peeing. Extra bullet, though. <laughs> But all right, so get into the music video for Lying to Myself. Um, I think it's actually pretty genius. I'm not going to like I don't like it's the guy walks in um, and he's, you know, got his collar popped on his polo like he's he thinks he's, you know, Billy Badass walking in there going to hit on all the ladies and then slowly but surely keeps getting rejected by each and every single one of them. And he slowly is turning into a clown until the very end. He gets asked to join the band. And then the band are all now dressed as clowns. He gets up there, plugs his guitar in, you know, shredding on the lead guitar. And then suddenly all those girls that didn't like him before are all dressed in skimpy outfits, one would say. And they're holding up signs like I'm down to clown. They're all about him at this point. But you know what he does? He's like, you know what? I'm not going to mess with with y'all. Y'all didn't mess with me before. I'm not messing with you now. So he looks back and sees this Harley Quinn dressing looking motherfucker in the back. (laughs) This uh, chick that's a little bit weird, just like he was at the beginning and picks her over all these other people wearing basically lingerie. I think that the commentary on that was is, you know, pretty spot on sometimes because like he uh, he was making a fool of himself the whole time. And then finally, when they, he got the attention, he stuck with someone that actually he fits in with rather than just wanting him. Cause he's playing lead guitar in a band. Now moral of the story, listen to Brad Paisley, start a band, <laughs> grow out your hair, learn you to play guitar. Pick of any, you can take a pick of any women you want. <laughs> Andy, what was your favorite part of the video? Uh, probably the hot chicks. <laughs> that, that's like the 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 thumbnail soonest i saw it pop up on youtube like five hours after the video got posted and that was the thumbnail and i'm like watching this one <laughs> andy said save for later because <laughs> yeah, i already really liked the song and i'm like i am glad this is the song that's got the next video <laughs> what about you kyle uh I, I agree with andy but also uh the the clown scene walking down the stairs um I thought it was really clever. The Joker walked down the stairs, and then you, you introduced me to the other little Easter egg at the bottom. What do you call it? I'm not very I'm not into the wrestling scene. Like, oh uh, yeah, when he gets, so like as you're saying, like from uh, the movie Joker with Joaquin Phoenix, he has that iconic scene now where he's walking down the steps dancing because he's like going crazy. Well, they copied this in this music video, and then when he gets to the very bottom, he it has a little nod to Shawn Michaels and Triple H and the the Road Dog and Billy Gunn and X Pac from the 1990s, early 2000s with the Generation X and the then WWF now WWE. They did the crotch chop. <laughs> I yeah, anytime good. and then he I, I gotta admit too while we're talking wrestling references he also after when he was halfway dressed as a clown and he bowled and he was bowling he starts doing like the Rick a uh, Rick Flair strut so yeah anytime I nerd out and he's ever I see uh some 90s wrestling references thrown in there yeah I'm a big fan of Easter eggs if like you know someone does something in like a video or or drops like a, a little note in a song and I get it and I'm like oh that's about X or whatever I, I nerd out a little Easter eggs that your average person you know, might miss. 
Oh yeah. I always think it's clever when they when they throw those things in there. No, I do too. And like just the song itself is a fantastic song because it's, oh, yeah, it's like thing. it's sitting there and <clears throat> talking about how you know I keep lying to myself about thinking that. It, you know, I, it's not that I, I don't love you. I just never get a chance because they don't give me a chance once they take a second glance and that he's not jealous. He's just ignored. It says in it. It's a relatable thing for a lot of people when you have um, to use a fancy phrase, unrequited love, so to speak. Um, and you just can't you say get that the, less fancy uh, when you, you when you like said. when you like somebody and they don't give a shit about you. <laughs> oh, OK, I got it. Why didn't you say it like that the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, that's I think that um, it's it's relatable for almost everybody at some point in their lives. Some people more often than others, obviously. But um, I mean, he he facing through that, and then in the music video, he starts playing guitar in the band, and suddenly everybody wants him. Like he said, join a band. Join a band. That's what we're all going to do. We're all just going to start a band. Oh yeah, I'll be the. Uh, I don't even know what instrument I could play. I can play anything. I well, you don't actually have to. Oh, you don't actually have to play it well. You just stand up there, right? Play loud. <laughs> actually, I'll be the guy that just has a guitar, who just air guitars. <laughs> Dude, I can get up there and play a mean H. H H H H H H. And for those that don't know, we're referencing Wilfred, the TV show from FX. <laughs> Fantastic show. Yeah, we watched that a lot and, in college when Andy and, and I were roommates. And as I can explain it to anybody, if you don't find it funny that it's an Australian guy dressed in a dog costume, if that doesn't strike you as funny, you're not going to like it. Very much so. We thought it was funny before we even saw a single minute of the show because how could you not? Here's a, here's a guy with an Australian accent dressed a as a dog costume, drinking, weed. drinking beer and smoking weed all day. I mean, it's hilarious. <laughs> have you ever seen that show, Kyle? No, but you too. I'm not going to lie. I have been hooked on this. Speaking of Australia, that reminds me. There's this video of this Australian plumber that all he does is just put a camera around with him all day. <laughs> and I mean, this dude is scared of like nothing. And <laughs> I don't know. It's actually really gross because like he just films some of the shit that he pulls out of people's drain lines and, <laughs> and he's just live commentating on it. Right. Now, the only reason it's interesting is probably because <clears throat> he's Australian. I mean, he's just like this great big dude. And he reminds me of an American redneck with an Australian accent. And I don't even know why I've been watching it, but I've just been on a kick where I've just watched five videos in a row. Is it on Facebook or YouTube? YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. They got There's some hillbillies in Australia. Yeah, they do. There's some really cool stuff on YouTube if you get caught down the rabbit hole sometimes. YouTube has the, the greatest algorithm I've ever written. It's amazing what it can queue up for you. Oh, I know. Like, I've been for you. I've been caught um, in the last few months, like listening to nothing but professional wrestling podcasts when I go to bed because of the algorithm. I never searched it out, but I think I watched one video and then all these like things came up and suggested for you. And I was like, huh, I know Eric Bischoff. Let me listen to this. And now I've been listening to it for months. I've gone through like 20 episodes. Yeah, it's it's amazing what what, what you'll find on YouTube. And the other thing I've been watching on YouTube is like the Karen compilations. Oh yeah, yeah. Where it's just like really awkward encounters where people just lose their minds over something, and I, I've never seen a duplicate yet, which is the most amazing part of it. That's interesting. They're all new, so there's a lot of Karens in the world. Oh, I believe that. I mean, good lord, <laughs> we've all encountered some Karens out there before. All right, so let's move into the main topic. Um, something that I. Uh, have been jamming out to ever since it released and I think is a fantastic record. So I believe she's from Floyd, Virginia, near Roanoke. Um, Andy and I have seen her in concert. Andy just doesn't remember it. I have um, zero memory of that. Yeah, she opened acoustically for American Aquarium a few years ago. Are you but sure I was there? You were. You, there's a chance you weren't, to be fair to Andy. So, there's a chance but, you weren't. But also, to be fair to Logan... There. To be fair to Logan, I also told him that I'd never took a picture of Jamie Lynn Wilson until he showed it to me. Yeah, and there were like <laughs> six of them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, th- thank you to Jamie Lynn Wilson for being a sport because uh, the whole group was a bunch of ragtag rednecks that night. And she was just such a gracious human being. So thank you for not being mad at us because Andy definitely did not I remember taking that picture. I don't picture. remember it. <laughs> But yeah, Jamie Lynn Wilson is an absolute angel. Thank you for putting up with all of our nonsense that night, asking you to take a picture with us after the show. 
<laughs> but anyways, we're back to on topic. Uh, so we want to talk about Morgan Wade's new album, Reckless, her first full length debut. Um, she she's somebody who I I didn't don't think I fully appreciated her when I saw her live. Um, and I think that was just because she was the opener. I didn't know anything about her. And you're just kind of hearing them play some new stuff that you've never heard before. I thought I saw- it was really good then. <laughs> I saw the talent that she had, um, but I, it just didn't click yet. But then, like, as has happened with a lot of people with Morgan Wade, you see a lot of her YouTube performances if you're like me and you scour the internet for live um, performances by artists that you like. And I, I came across some of hers, thanks again to the YouTube algorithm. and. Uh, I, I just was like, okay, I can get on board with this. Like she has like this really kind of like almost rasp in her voice that I, I just find very appealing. Like I love her voice so much, but just like her songwriting too is fantastic. And it, that's exhibited throughout this whole album. Cause this whole, like y- you've seen a lot of guys within the independent realm. And a lot of times, like y- you can even point to some of the folks from Appalachia in Kentucky, like Sergio and Tyler Childers that have kind of broken through that independent like um, scene so much and kind of gotten some wider appreciation and, and been able to sell out bigger and bigger arenas. And I think Morgan Wade might be one of those people from the female side that might be one of the next people to be able to actually break through that, um, that barrier, so to speak. Cause she, I, I, along with most people probably hearing her um, YouTube videos probably expected a little bit more of a country or affair than what we got. But I really love the production on this album for Reckless. It was produced by um, Jason Isbell's guitarist from the 400, 400 unit, uh, Sadler Vaden. I think he's, I want to say he's a Charlotte, North Carolina native, but I'm not 100% on that. But I think he is. And they have kind of like this almost alt country Americana kind of sound that veers a little bit into pop a little bit on a couple of tracks, like last cigarette we were talking about before we started recording. Andy brought that up. That's a little bit poppier, but it works. But the, the production on this, I, I love it. But then her songwriting is just fantastic. Cause this album really does kind of hit all the, uh, the notes of things that I like to listen to personally when it comes to like ideas of, of, you know, loneliness and, um, people who struggle with addiction and self doubt, and then just a lot of shit just not working out. Because Andy, what do we love about music? Sad songs make me happy. Exactly, and this album has plenty of it for you. And I, I really, I really dig it. What, so, what were some of the things about this album that you guys liked, or maybe some tracks that really stuck out to you when you listened to it? There's only two songs that I actually really have even gotten into the lyrics to because I really like the sound of like, I really like the sound of her voice. And like you said, too, I really like the production on it. I like the way they did it. They didn't, they didn't screw it up in any songs at all anywhere. And um, I don't know what, if it's like her accent or what, but it's like, it's, it's different. I, I said weird. I don't know that weird's probably the right way, but I really like it. The, whatever the way she like enunciates, I don't know what it is, probably her accent, but I really like that. And uh, Wilder Days and Last Cigarette are only two songs that I really got into the lyrics to. Everything else I've just been listening to because I really like the way it sounds. Like uh, Matches and Metaphors, I really like the chorus. I just love the way it sounds. But uh, like I was telling you earlier, it's like Wilder Days is kind of, I haven't heard that before. Like lyrically, the lyrical topic of it, I, I haven't heard that one before. And that's always, as you like to say, which I believe you're quoting Tom Petty, like Michael Scott, but uh, <laughs> it, uh, it's like everybody's already done it. Every what what's the quote? You know, what I'm about. everybody's already made that, it. that being creative is nothing more. I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember the exact quote, but being creative is nothing more than seeing what you can steal and get away with. Yeah, Tom Petty, Logan D. Berry. Exactly. Michael Scott. But but uh, like I haven't heard that before. And then uh, Last Cigarette is the only other one that I've really gotten into the lyrics of everything else. Just. Because what you said before, it's unusual for me to really like like that sound that much from a female artist. Yeah, no, it's very true. Like I'm definitely more into to female artist music than Andy is. But like Andy, the last uh, few weeks on this show, he's really gotten into Cat Hasty's. Now he's getting into Morgan Wade. Um, they're doing something that's appealing to him because Andy is a yep. guy that like some artists, some female artists, their their subject matter just isn't as I guess. Um, universal to someone to some uh listeners to where it, maybe it's a for lack of a better phrase uh maybe it's more focused on like what girls kind of want and i think in the mainstream a lot of times that's true because they try to package these people up as like these bubblegum pop kind of like let's go get those 14 15 year old girls because they're a very loyal demographic and you can make a lot of money off that but morgan wade has universal appeal these are things that a lot of people have experienced and like andy said about wilder days that's the first track on the album. First one I heard and immediately I was hooked 
because it's this song where it, it's it's just a different it's different from what you've heard before because the narrator of the song is is a female talking to a male and she's not lamenting the fact that he's wild and free and she wants to settle him down like we've heard a million and one times she's the like opposite it's, it's, it's the, the opposite. opposite of what you usually saying hear. that I, I wish you I had known you in your wilder days like how maybe how you used to be when you were in Chicago like like the even in the in the chorus is like you know you don't like the smell of cigarette smoke you said you only used to smoke when you drank like it, it's just it, it just is so different from what we're used to hearing from like female artists. And I, th- I think that's a good thing. I think that this is such an interesting idea of, Hey, I guess we're going to be, uh, I wish I could see you how you used to be back when you were a little bit younger and louder and free. It's, it's definitely, I'm, I'm right with you on that, Andy. And like to add on to that too, is like, and then in last cigarette, I've heard like that term before, but I don't know that I've heard it used exactly how she used it in that song. I'm not sure that I've heard, I don't know that I've heard that one before either. Have you? Um, so that one's a little bit different for me, I guess, because in some ways I have heard heard songs where it's like your love is a drug kind of was it Kesha that initially had a big mm-hmm. hit with something like that. Yeah, but that's not you, the you, same thing. But, but that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at. Like it, it almost is the same thing because she's talking about she needs her hit. She needs her fix. Um, I want you to be like my last cigarette. But the difference is in the song, she's talking about how um you know, I don't want you to be over her yet. She doesn't say over me yet. She says over her yet. And that adds another wrinkle to it because she's saying that the, the guy has been with her and she's been kind of gotten addicted to him because he was using her to get over his last relationship. That's where I think the difference was with this one and where I think there's another, there's an added layer of depth. It's not that they, these two have been in this long relationship and she can't let it go because she even says, I thought it takes three times to be, you know, seared into my mind, but really it was just one time and I was hooked. So I don't want you to be over her yet because I really need my last cigarette. I think that's the part that separates this from the other songs that are similar in this vein with using like the whole, your love is a drug, uh, uh, trope that often gets written about. Yeah. Um, so I really like that. Uh, the one thing I, to kind of piggyback off what you guys have said, I really like it because, you know, we've always talked about how, you know, sad songs make me happy, but it's all, it's very different to hear it from a female perspective, um, it, especially with like relationship issues and troubles sure. that ones may have, you know, you always hear like the sad song, oh, I did X that, you know, that really messed the relationship up and now I got to go fix it. Well, her, her songs aren't really like that. It's it's more like uh, like in the song The Other Side. Uh, she's like, you knew my skin back before I had all these tattoos. And you, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly, like, you've seen my is it body or soul that people told me I should hide. Yeah, the part of me that the world tells me I should hide. That's it, yeah. yeah. And I, I think that that's really, really clever. Uh, it's, it's like you knew me before I... I knew myself and it kind of, the song kind of reminded me of like, it's not like strawberry wine, but it was, it's like, you know, they're both, she's a really young girl in this song and she's probably crossing certain boundaries uh, that, you know, she, that the guy that she's writing the song about, oh, will always have a certain level of affection for because she did things with this person yeah. before she really matured is what it kind of sounded like to me. And what's also with that song too, what's kind of cool about it is like it th- if you listen to the song as it goes on, they're still together in this one. It's mm-hmm. like, it's not like it was a, um, it was like in strawberry wine, right? It was like strawberry wine yeah. 17. It was like that in that moment, kind of like the loss of the innocence becoming a, you know, an adult and, and to be not crude about it. Um, but in this one, they're still together. Like, she was like even saying like uh, looking back, she has to laugh because people didn't think they would work out. But the part that I really like about the song is even in the chorus where they're saying she's she's talking about how, um, you know, being a gypsy ain't so bad when you're with me because you never have to be alone. So like while she may be, you know, is going through some things in her life and just kind of lives more of a rambler mentality in some ways. And the world's telling her she shouldn't do this certain thing, but you still have that person by your side that makes it OK. Yeah. makes it easier to be able to endure hardships that happen in life. And I, I think that that really kind of hits that, hits that note pretty well. Yeah. And, and that's, it's really different to hear that from a female perspective versus a male perspective, which is um, unique to hear. And it's actually refreshing 
Um, now, the other thing I have to say about her is, like you talked about, her, I really liked her raspy voice. Uh, and I, I told Andy a deep breath before we started recording. I may just be totally out of left field, but it, she kind of reminds me a lot of if Miley Cyrus hadn't just fell off the wagon and then went into mainstream pop. Um, I can see that. Miley does have a yeah. Miley does have a little bit of raspiness to her voice, and you realize what she could have been when she covers like Jolene, and kind of makes you sad that. Granted, don't get me wrong. I like Miley Cyrus, even her pop music, but. Just imagining what she could have been if she would have would have stayed country. And I kind of I kind of scratched that itch with this song and this album. Yeah, I mean I can I can hear the I can I didn't think about that before you said it, but I can see what you're saying. Similarities like with the way her vocals sound a little bit with that kind of it's a female voice that has a little bit of a rasp to it. Um so I, I definitely can see that. I think I, I want to say, I guess the thing that I really like about Morgan Wade's music is it drips with authenticity. It's you, you really kind of see that what she's writing about is a hundred percent her. It's a hundred percent what she wants to, um, what, what things she's gone through and things that she has felt. And she's putting it in a very real raw way on from pen to paper and turning it into a song. And I think when things people, ha- it, it connects with people when people have things like that. And she's definitely got that it factor in my mind to be able to be successful because I I really like uh, another song that I really, really like on the um, album is the album closer met you. It's a lot, it's a lot more stripped back um, than normal uh, for the rest of the record. The only thing I only criticism, I guess I would have of that. And this, I don't know if this was just done purposefully or if it was done because of budget or whatever, I would have preferred to hear actual strings in the background. I don't, I don't know if that was like, what is it called? A Mellotron or whatever, but I, I, I would have preferred to have actually heard real strings in the background on that product on that for that song, like when they were producing it. But that song in particular, I think is fantastic. I had it on repeat today as I was driving to run some errands um, at, at the old Walgreens and then hit up good old Bojangles. Cause as Scotty McCreary would say, it was Bo Tom. I, um, I like the opening to that song is like, I would write you a love song, but I just don't know how that feels. It's super relatable in some ways for me. Like, it's just like, if you haven't ever been deeply in love and like had that, like, I guess, long-term aching relationship that people had, how are you supposed to write something for somebody like that? Cause you, I mean, you, it's not relatable. I mean, it doesn't mean that you weren't, didn't have some infatuation with the person like she seems to have, where it's like, it's a lasting impact that she has on this song, but you know, she, she's kind of been hurt here. And, um, you know, she, but she thought that she had seen it all until, you know, she said, until I met you, I just, I think that's, and then in the middle of that, it has that line that I think she delivers with great, uh, I guess, passion that really kind of hits home for a lot of people when they listen to it is like, it says, even I don't like the way I've been, uh, who I've been lately. It's like everybody at some point has been through kind of, they maybe have been doing stuff they shouldn't have been doing. And they kind of look, take inventory of themselves. And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm not even that fond of myself when they look in the mirror. And it it just, it's real. It's a song a, about that. Oh, hundred percent. It's just a real raw emotion that I just think speaks to the type of artist that Morgan Wade is. And hopefully will continue to be that. It's just like, it's raw, it's real and it's authentic. And I think that that's going to really connect with people because God knows it definitely did with me on this album. I love it. I think it's like a fantastic said, record. The, uh, like you said on that first line to quote reckless Kelly, uh, I could write another love song, but first I got to find somebody to love. Yeah. Yeah. Really though. I mean, you can't just, it's, it seems contrived when you try to write things sometimes that just for, you know, with a checklist of things, just to try to have this type yeah. of song on the album. I think a lot of this stuff she wrote came from a real place and I appreciate that. Oh well, yeah. We, we, it's talk, a- we, we had talked about, uh, something similar on the country protest one we did. Mm-hmm. When we were talking about the uh, the Dixie Chicks or whatever, the chicks. Yeah, the chicks. <laughs> my apologies. Uh, Can't say Dixie anymore, Kyle. Yeah, I'm, the word's canceled. Apologies. Apologies. Uh, but but real, like you're talking about, real authenticity comes from or, or re- comes from like a place of real emotion. Um, and I don't think you can write. You really can feel like emotion in a song when the artist wrote it and experienced it and they're not just reading the songs and then it's group for them. Yeah. Which I think you can really tell in this song because when she, when she the, the verse when she started talking about uh, the street uh, street lights all went out, I, I was like, dang, all right, that's how this song is going to go quick. It, it was very, like I said, her, 
her voice sounded very raw, but in a good way. And you could just really feel an emotional outpouring in that song. Yeah, I mean, I maybe that's what agree. it is. Maybe that's what it is with her voice. It's like it's the because I don't, I just don't know what it is that I like about it. But maybe it's like the like you're saying, like the emotional, like it's so it's like such an authentic album that it's so much emotion in the vocals that it just it just it's obviously there in the way it sounds. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, if this ever, if somehow by any chance. Morgan, you end up hearing this, or somebody from your camp ends up hearing this. You have an open invitation anytime we can to get you on Country Cold Cans. Was we absolutely love your record. Yep. There are so many good songs on this album. It's hard to, unless you like really kind of sat down and made a a list of like points on each song. It's hard to go through the whole checklist or, of of the track list because there was it, it, there really wasn't a weak song on the album. There mm-hmm. may be one or two that you listen to a little bit less than the others, but. This was a strong, strong effort for a debut LP, and I, I'm excited to see what's going to come more from Morgan Wade. Because I like, I got to say again, the production on the album I thought really worked. I know there are going to be some people that are going to lament that it's not country enough, but maybe that's not the direction she wanted to go. I the mean, only, it, this was a fantastic album. The only knock I would give the album is sometimes you can come out the gate a little too strong, and uh, she might have a little bit of trouble following this up. I mean, I'm not saying she won't. But, you know, you come out swinging this hard, you know, people are going to have high expectations for round two. Yeah, I mean, it happens with a lot of artists, actually, because, you know, they say, I mean, you have your whole life to write uh, to write for the first album, but you have like a a, a year to write for the second. So yeah. it's like it. I, I hope that she can follow up, you know, a sophomore album that's that's is good, if not better. But, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. This one's still brand new and. Is I got to I got to recommend it to all of our listeners out there. Definitely go if you haven't check out uh, Morgan Wade's debut album Reckless. It's available on all streaming platforms. Go on and purchase the album. You know, support the artist, but it's definitely fantastic. One hundred percent agree. All right, well, facts no printer. Straight facts no printer, brother. But yeah, so well for this episode of Country and Cold Cans, as always, I'm Logan sitting here with Andy and Kyle, and we will see you next time.